Cool. Hi, Greg. Really pleased to meet you. Um, Good afternoon. Just wondered if you could introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. I'm Greg Haver. I'm a record producer and uh, I've been involved in music for the last 30 years and uh, I'm here to give a, a bit of a chat to the students and trying to help them avoid any pitfalls of the music industry. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much. And um, we've got some questions for you. Um, We'd like to get your opinion on some, some answers to these, if you could, please. Um, first one, if you met yourself um, 10 years ago, if you could give, you, give yourself some advice then, what would it be and why would you choose those answers? Uh, probably give up smoking. <laughs> <laughs> give up smoking earlier would, would be a good one. Yeah. Um, now, actually, there, there is a serious answer in the fact that obviously being a record producer is a really sedentary job. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really easy to get really unhealthy and... Uh, and you know, smoke too much, eat the wrong food, and um, you know, it took me a long time. I'm still re trying to recover from like 10 years of bad eating and, over and smoking, and so you know, I'd actually it would be try and be a bit healthier because your work is better as a result. Okay. You know, I'm really strict about not drinking in the studio, about sort of trying to stay sober and you know, and aware because it's a big part of the job. Yeah. And it might not be the sexiest answer, but it's a really important True one, I think. yeah. You've had the rock and roll years. <laughs> I've done many rock and roll years, and I think it's, um, it's fun in your 20s, but in yeah. your 40s, not so great, you know? Yeah, oh, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, uh, second question. Do you have a favourite piece of software that you like to use in the studio and work with artists on? Well, I'm very much a Pro Tools man. You know, I, I find it's the most instinctive software to use. A lot of people I know use Logic, mm -hmm. because, especially songwriters, because it's a more instinctive tool for songwriting. But really, w whatever software you use, it's all about what you, the music that you record with it, yeah. really. It's very, it's very easy to sort of, you know, this bit of software is better than that bit. But, um, you know, Pro Tools, I find, is the most instinctive to use. As far as plugins, probably um, Echo Boy and any of the sort of, um, yeah. any of the Sound Toys plugins I really, really like. Um, I used to use a lot of analog delays, space echoes and, and uh, bell delays, and which I actually use the first digital one. But, um, so I, I find the, you know, the algorithm they use for the sound type stuff is really good. It's, it feels really, really, really full and organic. And it, probably if, I to, if I'm going somewhere, it's the one plugin that yeah, I insist you, on. Really. You go to. Um, we know from your back catalog <coughs> of stuff, um, you probably describe yourself more as an out-of-the-box kind of guy rather than mm. in the box. Could you give us a little insight into that at all? Yeah, what I think that's software? just from my history of working on analog desks and, and working to tape, yeah. really. And um, even when computer automation became the norm, I never automated with the computer, and I still don't, if I'm mixing now, I'm still very much, I like to move faders in real time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, it's whatever way you're used to working, really. Fantastic, beautiful answer. Um, um, moving on from that, what kind of advice would you give to any kind of aspiring young producer out there from, from your experiences as, as you've developed? Well, and uh, trying to be positive, I think it's just enjoy the process, really. Enjoy making records, because mm. if you don't enjoy it, there's going to be enough hard times in making records that if you've got to be enough good enjoyable times in it to make it an artistic job wanted you know, that's worth pursuing it's um you know there's there's always a lot of challenges you know whether they're budgetary ones or mm. musical ones or you know dealing with the whole industry side of it i mean my philosophy has always been i make records for free and i get paid to deal with all the stuff that goes around making a record you know dealing with the labels and so um it would just be trying to be disheartened by things that go wrong, try to learn from the mistakes you make, because you will make them, and I still make them now after all these years of doing it, is interpretive. You don't, you know, the process is very much, you know, do you like it? Does the artist like it? Do the people who are financing it like it? You know, um, there's always a level of compromise. So I think just, it's just be aware that music is a compromise, and, um, but try and make it as, as, as small a compromise as possible, really. Excellent. But it's, you know, I mean, it's a really... It's a long subject, we've yeah, been yeah. about it for a long time, but Absolutely. I'd say just you know, always be aware of and enjoy the process, and the day that I stop enjoying it is the day that I stop making records, really. Great answer, man. Um, we know your background, you were kind of a drummer first and a musician first, and leading that into the, the world of production and you making records, do you think that that upbringing through music, being a music, musician, has helped you with the role as a producer? You join a band for two reasons. 
you know, because you love music and because it's easy to get girls. Which is, you know, I mean, and any musician tells you otherwise. Yeah, exactly. It's a liar. liar. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, obviously the whole girl thing lessens as time goes by, but that's still love of music still there and the love of being a musician and playing. And, um, and I still have that. And my favourite times of making records these days are those first couple of days on a new session where you're in the room with the other musicians scheduling songs and... Uh, and, and playing recording. Do you, do you feel that that love for music kind of transcends into the, the stuff you do when you actually move the faders? And oh yeah, if you don't love it, then any artistic profession, although there'll be challenges, if you don't love it, it's the wrong profession. Yeah. There are easier ways to earn money <laughs> if that's your goal, you know, and um, money should be a secondary goal, not a primary goal. So um, yeah, uh, the love of it is the really important thing. And that, I love the company of musicians, you know, d it's great to spend a lot of time with people who are younger and more enthusiastic. So it keeps your enthusiasm yeah. levels up. It's like if you have an old dog and you get a puppy and the yeah. old dog gets a new lease of life, that's how I kind of feel every day in the studio when I'm surrounded by like, like tw you know, 20 year old musicians. It's yeah. like they still love it. and They're not beaten down by the, yeah. by the weight of the industry and they, they're, they're making records because they love the process. And, yeah. And um, you know that that keeps me enthused about Can't it. I mean, we really. can hear your enthusiasm. It's no, great. it's great. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful. You know, I, I, I'm the luckiest man alive. I have a wonderful job, and it's yeah. like, it's um, yeah. I, I thank my lucky stars every day. Really. See, and it's the diet and the healthy living. Yeah, you know, well, that's my wife. <laughs> she stops me smoking and eating rubbish food. Excellent. That's, but oh, I don't tell her I had fish and chips for lunch.